feel free to do that. Um, so uh, welcome to the Keystone Center's uh, second uh, in a series of, of dialogues on um, the proposed development of the Pebble Mine. Uh, my name is Todd Bryan, and I'm a senior associate uh, with the Keystone Center and the, in Colorado and the project manager. Uh, as I said, this is the second in a series of four independent science panels that started in December of 2010 with a panel titled Responsible Large-Scale Mining Global Perspectives. The Responsible Large-Scale Mining panel brought together experts who have studied the principles, practices, criteria, and standards by which mining proposals and mining operations are being evaluated worldwide. It was purposely not focused on Pebble, but was looking at experiences and lessons learned in other places. The science panels this week and next week will focus specifically on Pebble's environmental and socioeconomic baseline studies. The baseline studies document the existing no mine conditions and form the foundation for future plans and decisions and whether those plans and decisions include a mine or not. The panel's charge is to evaluate the credibility and sufficiency of the baseline studies and to recommend additional studies if necessary. The panels are not focused on a mine plan or the potential impacts of a mine in the region. The Keystone Center is planning an additional panel uh, that will focus on the mine plan when it is released to the public. Um, before I turn the podium over to uh, Jane Witzlet and, and Charlotte McKay of the Pebble Partnership to describe um, the, uh, the, to provide a background on the baseline studies, let me say a little bit about the Keystone Center dialogue, uh, the Keystone Center, some guiding principles uh, for putting it together, uh, some of the challenges we face and why, and why we're doing it, and finally uh, our agenda. Um, I'll, try to, I'll try to be brief. Um, as I mentioned, the Keystone Center's dialogue consists of a series of four independent science panels that started in 2010 with a panel on responsible large-scale mining. Uh, the panels this week will evaluate the baseline studies pertaining to geology, geochemistry, hydrology, and water quality. That's this week. The panels next week will evaluate the baseline studies pertaining to fish, wildlife, and vegetation, and socioeconomic, cultural, and subsistence conditions. A final panel is expected to engage participants in a dialogue uh, comparing the existing no mine conditions with a mine plan and will revisit the principles and practices identified in the first panel. Um, a little background on how, how we got to where we are today. Uh, the Pebble Partnership approached the Keystone Center in, in 2008 and asked if the organization could determine whether a dialogue of some sort was feasible and if so, what it might look like. Uh, after extensive communication with people throughout the region, uh, we recommended an independent scientific review of the baseline studies and mine plan. Uh, the Keystone Center also set forth the terms for our independence and the, in, and the panel's independence throughout the process. Um, the process we recommended is not, um, has not been attempted anywhere in the world to our knowledge and um, is not without its challenges. Uh, challenges around whether Keystone can maintain its own objectivity given the, that Pebble is funding the project. Challenges around whether the science panels can provide an objective review. Uh, challenges around Pebble's decisions not to release baseline data in a user-friendly format and challenges around whether the Keystone Science Panels are fundamentally at odds with the EPA assessment and its science panel. Uh, these have been the most difficult and controversial and have raised legitimate questions about the credibility of the Keystone process. I'll address some of these below and will answer questions pertaining to these and other issues uh, during the lunch period um, to, to save time. Regarding our independence and the independence of the science panels, the Keystone Center is following National Research Council policies to ensure that our science panels provide the most objective, independent, and unbiased review possible. Two National Research Council policies have been particularly important to us. One, that science panel members must participate without compensation uh, other than travel expenses at federal government uh, rates. And two, that science panel members do not have biases or conflicts of interest that might prevent them from objectively reviewing the baseline studies. These policies are extremely important to us because they ensure that the panels provide the most independent, objective, and unbiased review possible. Regarding Pebble's decision not to release the baseline studies, 
or the not to release the baseline data in a user-friendly format. Our science advisory committee was highly critical of that decision and felt that the decision hampered the ability of the scientific community to evaluate the credibility of the baseline studies. We were aware, however, that the scientific community had the tools to convert data to a user-friendly format and that while Pebble's decision significantly hampered the ability of, of the scientific community to evaluate um, the baseline studies, it did not prevent it. Some of our science, science panel members have reanalyzed some of Pebble's data themselves and we know that other scientists, we know of other scientists who have completed their own uh, reanalysis. It's important to note that even if Pebble had released data in a user-friendly format, scientists would not reanalyze all of the data, uh, but would reanalyze enough of it to develop levels of confidence um, that studies could be considered uh, credible. This is an ongoing process that needs to continue beyond the science panel discussion here. Uh, regarding challenges around whether the Keystone Science Panels are fundamentally at odds with the, with the EPA assessment uh, and, its, and its own science panel, uh, they are not. They are actually very different projects that neither compete with nor duplicate each other. Both rely on independent science panels to evaluate very different studies and both are valid and useful in understanding the complex scientific and technical information that surrounds the prospect of a large-scale mine in the Bristol Bay watershed. Moreover, the EPA assessment will not be influenced by the Keystone process because EPA's assessment is complete. Um, I will address question, these questions in more detail over the lunch period, including um, how we are envisioning uh, a, a, a final panel that is focused on the mine plan um, and um, recent controversy over the departure of two valued panel members. Um, let me say a little bit about the Keystone Center. Uh, Keystone Center is a, is a nonprofit organization that was, that was founded in 1975 to address inherent tensions in federal environmental laws and policies uh, that were passed in the late 1960s and early 1970s in the United States. More recently, the Keystone Center pioneered the Keystone Dialogue process focused on public policy issues in the areas of environment, energy, and public health. The organization is headquartered in Keystone, Colorado, and has offices in Washington, D.C., as well as satellite offices in Denver, Boston, and Santa Fe. Um, we're often asked why the Keystone Center is doing this. Um, the Keystone Center is a mission-driven nonprofit organization that strongly <laughs> believes that in order for science to be trusted on all sides, it must be evaluated through credible, objective, and transparent processes. Science is not at its best in adversarial processes where it is guarded, used strategically to, to support values, beliefs, or political positions, or turned into a popularity contest. Science is best when it is done in an objective and transparent environment of shared learning and interaction. Unfortunately, regulatory processes force science into adversarial and polarized camps on all sides. We then, have, we then have trouble separating the science from the entities advocating the science uh, and, can, and can only too easily dismiss it. Given the opportunity to improve the way science is used in controversial decision-making processes of this importance, um, the Keystone Center decided that we would take on this challenge. Um, for us, the true test of the validity of the Keystone Science Panel process is whether the independent scientists who are donating dozens of hours of their time to review thousands of pages of material feel that they are compromising their integrity, their reputations, and, their, and the reputations of their, of their institutions. And whether our, our science advisors who have donated hundreds of hours over the past three years to help us develop the process feel that they are compromising their integrity, their reputations, and the reputations of their institutions. The Keystone Center process is definitely not without its cha challenges. However, we have learned from them, and um, hopefully we have learned from them and can improve our process. Ultimately, the science panels will speak for themselves. Um, I have a couple of other uh, kind of important sort of logistical and, and um, organizational things that I want to uh, go through here, and then I, I'll want to introduce um, some people. Um, 
So first, uh, we ask attendees and panel members to be on their best behavior and to treat each other with respect, understanding, caring, and fairness. We ask this for two reasons. <clears throat> One, because we're all, in, we're all on public television <laughs> and are required to behave well on public television. Uh, and two, because we all recognize that this is a difficult and controversial issue for people of the region in Alaska and has the potential to divide communities and families. <clears throat> Second, I want to iterate, reiterate that the panels this week and next week are focused on the baseline studies and not on a mine plan or a potential impacts of a mine. As mentioned, this, as mentioned the science panels were asked to review some 27,000 pages of baseline studies. Questions and comments um, uh, pertaining to a mine plan or potential impacts from mining will be deferred to a final panel uh, that will focus on comparing a mine plan with a no mine option. We acknowledge the desire to have this discussion and are committed to such a panel. Um, three, uh, there are gaps in some of our panels where we could not find qualified experts who were available and had the time to voluntarily pour over the sheer volume of material contained in the baseline studies. Gaps occur in the areas of wildlife and habitat, endangered species, wetlands and vegetation, and traditional knowledge. We, we are hopeful that we can convene an additional science panel that will evaluate these studies. And where we convene that, I think, is, is open for, for suggestions. Uh, fourth, the Keystone staff and Science Advisory Committee uh, chose to eliminate some baseline study chapters from the review process so that we could devote more time to chapters we knew held more interest to stakeholders. We therefore eliminated chapters on noise, visual resources, power, transportation, and land use. Um, there wasn't, there didn't seem to be a lot of, of interest and controversy around those chapters, um, and that there, and that the information in, the, in those chapters of the baseline studies is fairly straightforward. If that's not true, then we we certainly want to go back to that. Um, I want to go through a couple of uh, PowerPoint slides that kind of give us a little bit of a, of more of a of a context here. Um, the um, this is the a statement that we use to, to sort of guide how we're looking at this. Um, for the Keystone Center, uh, this is clearly not a how question, it's a weather question. And I think there's a lot of uh, confusion about, about the Keystone Center's um, involvement in the process and, and what our goal is. Um, when we did our assessment a couple of years ago, we really had no idea um, what we would learn from people, so we really just wanted to do that assessment. What we learned from people is that, is that for, the, for the vast majority of people in the region, um, Pebble is a weather question. And so we've been approaching this as, as a weather question. Um, and I think this quote sort of sums up how we're looking at this and hopefully um, I've left it up on, up on the screen long enough that you've sort of memorized it. So um, there won't be any, any more questions about the Keystone Center's um, intentions. Um, I want to say more about this uh, at the lunchtime period, but I wanted to give you um, a description of the National Research Council's policy on bias. Um, and because that's, this is an important policy that we've used to sort of guide the selection of our panel members. Um, and particularly the, the, uh, the sentence that's underlined there that, um, that pertains to some of, the, um, some of the things that I want to discuss um, during the lunch period, if anybody's interested. Um, there's a, the, there's a, another part of that policy that allows for an exception, and I, wanna, I wanna also want to cover that. But, but these National Research Council policies are very, very important in how we, in how we run the panels. Um, and so we're trying to be uh, as objective as possible, and this is, this is one of the principles that's really important to us. Um, I also wanted to, I don't know if you can see the way down there at the bottom, it says the way some scientists talk. Um, I, I put this up here because um, I've had it for 30 years and I've never used it. <laughs> um, and what, I, what it basically says is that I think it reminds us that um, when scientists talk to, to the public and when they talk to each other, it can be very technical. And we want to try to to have a scientific scientific discussion between between 
um, the Pebble, Pebbles consultants and our science panels in a forum, in a public forum, um, where you all can understand what they're talking about. And so we're going to ask them to be as um, as uh, uh, casual as we can in the way that that they t that, that they talk about the science. And if it gets complicated, we want to try to try to rein that in a little bit. So. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that you all understand that this is really a discussion um, about science. It's a discussion about technical information, and we're going to try to make it as uh, as accessible as possible to to everybody who's here and who's um, who's uh, on the the web stream. Um, I also wanted to give you some sort of guiding principles that we've given our panel members in how they look at the baseline studies. So. These are the these are in a sense the charge questions um, that we're looking at in terms of the baseline studies. So is the methodology sound? Are there other ways of approaching the study that could produce better results? Uh, is there enough method methodological information to duplicate the study? Is the study objective? Uh, were you able to reanalyze existing data to develop confidence in what was presented? Um, is there research that may that may not have been considered? Are there gaps or discrepancies in the study that should be addressed? Uh, do you have confidence in the study? If not, why? And does the study adequately characterize the baseline conditions? And when I talk about the study in here, I'm talking about the presentation, not the whole the whole um, environmental baseline document that's 27,000 pages, but the study that's under that's under discussion in, in that in the science panel process, so the chapter, the, the analysis that they did. Um, we, won't, we won't go through each of these questions, uh, and some of them don't apply to all of the, all of the chapters, but this, is, but this is what we've asked the science panel members to look at, and it's sort of how they'll go through their, their, their discussions. Um, I also wanted to uh, kind of give you a, a breakdown of how, this, of how we anticipate running uh, the panel, so I, I'm going to show you what today looks like. Um, so we, we've divided the, the agenda up into sessions. So we have um, in the science panels today and tomorrow, we, today and tomorrow morning, we have three sessions. Um, the first one is focused on ge uh, geology, mineralization, physiography, and soils. And um, we're going to start with a, a, a brief presentation um, by one of Pebble's consultants who who participated in, excuse me, in that study. So um, Louise Shannon from Knight Peasold is uh, one of the lead consultants on that, and she will give a, a presentation about the studies to, to try to provide more of context for you all. Um, beneath that, we have listed in the agenda background presentations, and we're not going to show these, but but these are um, the geology and mineralization and the physiography and soils. Uh, presentations, the more lengthy presentations, are actually online. And so we don't have time to get into all of that. Um, they've been presented. They're online for viewing. But we wanted to provide a placeholder in our agenda for those things. So um, so we'll have, we'll have a presentation by a Pebbles consultant. We'll have a break. Then when we come back from the break, the, the panels will, will discuss the, that particular chapter, that study. So there will be questions and questions and answers and comments between uh, our panel members and um, and the consultants um, and our panel members some of some of our panel members have presentations that they have visual presentations that they would like to show to help guide that discussion um, they're not going to do an alternative an alternate presentation but they may have some graphics that are that help them in the in the discussion so we want to have we want to have that dialogue back and forth between the con Pebbles consultants and our panel members. Um, we're not sure how long that'll take. Uh, it may not take very long. Um, and then what we want to eventually get to is this is this third part, which we're calling open discussion, questions, comments, and, dis and discussion, where we're now engaging the the audience um, with the panel members and with the consultants. So. So because this is focused on the baseline studies um, the, and the panel members are here to have reviewed the baseline studies, uh, it would be very helpful to frame questions or frame comments around the baseline studies. 
Um, they're not prepared to talk about the mine plan because they haven't seen it. Um, the context for the, the baseline studies is a, is a mining proposal, so they have to think about that context. But in terms of, of talking about potential impacts, uh, talking about a mine plan, um, it won't, they won't be able to answer that question. And so um, we want to make sure that we're, that we're because, the, uh, because of the importance of the baseline studies, we want to try to keep the, the discussion focused on that. As I said, we'll have another panel uh, later on, and, and I'll talk more about that, how we're envisioning that at lunch, so you can see <laughs> what that looks like. Um, so the afternoon session, um, notice I skipped over lunch. Um, uh, let me say a little bit about lunch. We have, um, we have provided lunch here, so there are box lunches um, that will be delivered in the, in the hallway. Um, and uh, we have, we purchased uh, a number of lunches. I think we have lunches for everybody. Um, we're trying to accommodate uh, as much as we can walk-ins, and so we, hopefully we've planned for, for all of that, uh, and we can accommodate all that. Um, so we have an hour for lunch. During that lunch period, um, if you all go grab your box lunches and come back in here if you want to, I'll talk, I'm going to talk about these other things in more detail. Um, session two is focused on seismology and volcanism. Um, and we have a, a Pebble consultant who will give a presentation. Uh, the background presentation on that um, is right beneath that with the link. I think you can see the link. Hopefully you can. Um, and then um, after that, we'll again have that keystone, the, the science panel uh, discussion, and then we'll have a break, and then we'll have this, op we'll open this up for a broader discussion. Um, in your agenda, if you have a handout in the agenda, at the end of, of each day, um, I have a, 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 a placeholder for panel recommendations. And um, what we decided to do, to, so we have more opportunity for discussion, is to is to hold the panel recommendations until the end of the day and a half. So each of these, each of these segments is a, is actually a day and a half, and together they're three days. So we're going to hold the panel recommendations or observations until that time, so we have more time for discussion. Um, and then the other thing that we want to do is. Um, we have an, an optional evening discussion that we want to um, uh, convene if, if there's an interest in convening it. And the purpose for that is because um, in this open discussion, we, we may have an, uh, roughly an hour to do that. Um, and that may not be enough time to do it. Uh, what we, what we want to make sure we have is, an, is a, a, a good discussion, a good dialogue in the, in the group. If it, if it looks like there's, a, there's a, a highly technical issue that requires more discussion. Um, we may, for the sake of time, direct that discussion into the evening session. Um, and so we want to let people come back at 7 if they're interested in, in furthering that discussion with our panel members, with Pebbles Consultants, and with any of you who want to participate. And that will be a much more informal, open discussion. Um, Let me say a little bit about a little bit more about the open discussion. We uh, we have a microphone in the middle of the room. Um, we're going when we get to that 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 point um, in the discussion, we're going to ask people if they have questions for the panel members or comments about the baseline studies that um, that you come up to the microphone. Um, what we're not really prepared for is um, is uh, audience members making a long a lengthy presentation because we really want to focus on the panels. We want to get the panels to talk about um, this, this uh, information. So, so it, it's, it would be much more effective to pose questions for them. Or, for example, if you know if there are baseline conditions, if there are existing conditions um, out there uh, in the region, whether they're either geologic conditions, water conditions, um, fish information about fisheries, um, information about people, information about public health. We want you to, to raise those um, because one of the things that the panel members are going to be doing is in their evaluation is to identify uh, recommendations for further baseline analysis if that's necessary. And so if they miss something, 
um, you all hopefully will uh, be able to identify that. Um, and that would be tremendously helpful to the panels if, if you all bring that f forward. Um, so, so the Keystone Center is going to facilitate that dialogue. We may, if, if we think you're going on too long, we may um, ask you to, if we could direct this discussion into the evening session, and hopefully you'll, you'll agree that that's a better uh, environment for that discussion so that we can get as much of the uh, shorter, briefer stuff covered in the, in the discussion during the day. So let me um, leave that at that, and then I, then I want to... Um, I want to enter before we before we get uh, um, into the uh, presentations. Um, I want to introduce a few people uh, and thank a few people for um, uh, getting us to this point. So first, I want to um, introduce you to the Keystone Center staff um, who work behind the scenes to pull this together. Um, I don't know if they're all in the room, but Matt Malika uh, may be out in the hall. Uh, Susan Klein, who's sitting back here at the table. Uh, Nikki Kozalka, who you, um, uh, right here. <laughs> um, and Sarah Denzel, who will be here uh, next week. Um, we want to thank 360 North for web streaming the panels to locations throughout Alaska. Um, we want to thank um, Leanne Monk from the uh, University uh, Geology Department for serving as a campus sponsor. And to uh, Dean Stephen Rollins for the uh, the UAA Consortium Library for providing this this space, um, and I want to introduce um, you to the also to our independence independent science advisory committee, um, who volunteered their services for the past three years to select panel members and to plan and moderate the panels. Uh, these are individuals who um, are sci are well known and respected scientists themselves, are also working without compensation. And have and have really worked with us for a long period of time to put this together. <clears throat> so let me see if I can find them. I'll I'll just call your names and see if you're you're, you're not all here. But so Milo Ad Adkison is here. Milo's in the back. Um, Milo is an associate professor at the Juno Center, School of Fisheries and Ocean Scientists at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, and Milo is helping us put together our panel on um, fish wildlife. Uh, and habitat and vegetation, so both on the Bristol Bay side and on the Cook Inlet side. Um, Elizabeth Andrews um, is a panel member, is a science advisory committee member um, who's helping us work on the socioeconomic subsistence and cultural um, chapters. And Elizabeth is a former director of the Division of, of, of Subsistence for the Alaska Department of Fish and Game. Um, Elizabeth is actually now works for FEMA and um, was concerned about us holding a fall panel because she might get called away for uh, disaster duty. And so Elizabeth was called away for disaster duty and is working on, on the floods. Um, Dr. Kirk Nordstrom. Uh, Kirk is a senior hydrogeochemist chemist with the U.S. Geological Survey uh, and is um, working on our geology, geochemistry, hydrology, and water quality uh, panels, um, along with uh, Philip Verplank. And Philip is a research uh, geologist for the U.S. Geological Survey Mineral Resources Team in Denver. And finally, um, Dr. Rod Eggert um, is a professor and director of the Division of Economics and Business uh, at the Colorado School of Mines, uh, where he's taught since 1986. And Rod was, the, was instrumental in, putting, in helping us put together our first panel that took place in December 2010, and um, will be here next week. So those five individuals have just spent um, a tremendous amount of time and have been extremely helpful. Um, so let me um, let me stop there and turn um, the discussion over to uh, I think Jane and Charlotte, or one or both of you. 